That yeah, was fun. Yeah, to me. Good would... day. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dude, I fell asleep on the bowl. To, to, to the, oh. at, uh, this was actually kind of serious. I uh, Sometimes, like I told you, I wake myself up by doing that, like, jumping real quick. Right, I, like you feel yourself falling or something? Like kind of what the video looks like of me hitting my head, and I, I went to take a leak, and I sat down, and I must have fell asleep. You fell asleep during a leak? Uh, yeah. but That's what I, he's saying. That's why he's concerned. I what, sit, when did this I happen? What time? But I continue to sit there... 3.30? In the afternoon? No, no, no. This morning. Oh, at night. Oh, yeah, this yeah, you were... morning? In other words, you were in the middle of sleep and you woke up to piss. Yes. You sit on the bowl right. and you just passed out on the bowl. I, I, I took a leak and then I'm like, you know, I'm like, well, <laughs> let me just sit here for a second. Oh, man. And then I fall asleep and uh, cool. I I do that thing where it's like Richard blowing the horn. I kind of, uh, but on my own, and I fell towards the shower stall, and I hit my head on the fucking shower thing, and then I got up. And it's just, it's Could have wakes you up. Yeah, but it's really <laughs> pathetic. What do you think's going on, Art? Do you think those are all the weight What thing? are you doing before you go to sleep? You eating a big meal? Jerking off, eating <laughs> typical shit. Eating, jerking off. Uh, yeah. Uh, I did. Well, last night I had. I tried desperately not to eat after seven, but I got news for you. I got news for you. I'm. I. I was having such a problem from overeating like that because sometimes I can just get into this drag where I eat big meals, especially right. at night. Yeah. Now I'm just cutting down. I don't fart at night anymore. It's so liberating. Like I don't, I'm not all gassy and uncomfortable. Right. So, I mean, I don't know how you're going to do it. I mean, you're into the Jaguar. You're really eating all the time. But I'm telling you. Yeah, trying I, I to feel... stop at 7 for Artie is like trying to come to a complete stop <laughs> well, going 90 miles an hour. I can't stop at 7 either. What I do is, I, you see, but you'll laugh. I have like a couple of grapes and um, oh, I have I, some I, cashews, I, and that kind of satiates me. And I ain't me laughing at nobody now. <laughs> no. I mean, I've since I stopped playing, <laughs> like after I got out of high school, I played one year uh, in this they call it semi-pro. It was a hardball league, you know, and I and I loved playing. And after that, when I started playing softball, which is just a, a, an excuse to drink, I've led as unhealthy a 20 years as you could imagine. And now I am just at the pinnacle of shit else. Oh. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and 40s approaching. There's a lot is of very... Is scaring you at all into, yes. like, dieting? No. Yeah, no, it's lately. It's scaring it him, but not into dying. Dieting. Dying? Why don't you get one of these personal coaches, like, who do take over everything? Kind of like what Robin did, like, move him in. And like like well, a sober uh, coach. Dr. Ron. Yeah. Yeah, no, I know. Uh, yeah, there's a, there's a coach for everything nowadays. <laughs> Dr. Ronnie's hardcore commitment. Robin was up for that. I, I mean, just like someone who would... Yeah, you need like a regular person who would just cut your portions and, Man. you know, feed you at, you know, every two hour intervals, but you couldn't get all, any of your own food. But I mean, commit and to stay it. stay with you 24 hours a day. And you know, see, like now, though. Uh, yeah, you got to lose the weight. I dude. said to myself, all right, this weekend I'm really going to have. You know, a healthier weekend. I'm gonna get. Up. <laughs> I'm gonna get up. I'm gonna jog. You know, and then I thank you, Gilbert. Jog. <laughs> and then I realize Gilbert doesn't think I can do it. Right. And then I realize that I got a gig in Detroit. I got to go to Detroit, so, and it's like you know, all right. You can still do it. You can still cut back. A right. guy I know is flying me up on a private jet to Detroit, uh, and uh, there's food on a jet. And what you do you don't mean? have to have food on the jet. <laughs> what do you mean, though, Art? Who, who, who's this guy There's flying? There's a guy that, uh, well, I'm, I, I guess he doesn't want me to say his name, but I might get into business with this guy concerning my website. Yeah. And um, He's got a private jet, this dude? He's a big, big-time hedge fund guy. Big Ooh. time. And he wants to be in the website business with you? He is not, like, he runs he a, must be a star a multi-billion dollar. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> a multi well, you let the guy tell a story. He runs a multi-billion dollar hedge fund, <laughs> and he he you know he likes the world of entertainment. He's interested in it. Real like you talk about type A personalities. I went to meet him at his office. It's got the most incredible view of Central Park I've ever seen. Hmm. And the guy, about a forty-five year old guy, like in perfect shape. When he talks to you, you feel like you know I he's mean, focused on you. Focused, like he makes you feel important and. And uh, and he got in contact uh, with me through a friend of his that had seen me do stand up or something. I don't know, but there's this whole big thing now. Websites, you no know Will Ferrell's doing with funny or yeah. right, and, right, right. Use and, your uh, brand to stretch out and do right. some entertainment and right. stuff. Yeah, I, little, I considered that. Make too. little videos and yeah. all that stuff well, like I mean, Will is doing. You're on such a different level. No, nah, I, mean, I just kind of just said yeah, it sounds like a lot of fucking work. It, it that's the problem, but yeah. it, there's. You know, anyway, it's it's being discussed, and I went and met the guy. He's a really nice guy. He's from Detroit. 
Right. Uh, and where's he uh, live? Gross Point. Uh, I, I well no he he's from Detroit originally he lives oh. in Manhattan okay. he's he's out of there now and uh, yeah right and he's <laughs> a, too many billionaires in Detroit <laughs> hardcore um hardcore local sports fan of Detroit so I happen to have this gig up there and uh, he said I'm going to go to the Lions game and probably the Michigan game so you hop on a ride with him and he goes hey I want to come see your act because I haven't seen oh, it yet so live met on his itinerary like a business thing almost yeah. and he said hey you want to come up I got the I got the jet so nice. it's going to be a lot of fun you know what kind of jets he got uh, I'll see I don't know probably one of them Gulf streams so I, now I Artie think. you you have that you can't dictate what kind of food is on the jet, there'll be food on the jet. See, well, that's yeah. the problem, and it's like, uh, when I went for a meeting... It's not that long a flight, dude. You could skip the whole it's eating an hour thing. and ten minutes, yeah. yeah. That's all drinking. Yeah, just drink. <laughs> uh, what is this hedge fund shit? You know, I know these guys are all rich, but what do they do? They do the in the stock market? The guys who finance Beer League were involved with hedge funds. Like, so what what a hedge what fund is, is... Now, look, I get ready to pounce on me, because I might be totally wrong... This is my understanding of what a hedge fund is. All right. You get a, a big, like, a huge, like, consortium of, of investors. Right. You get a whole bunch of dudes who have A whole have bunch money. of guys who uh, are capable. Some are bigger fish. Some are smaller. Some might be capable of putting in a million bucks. Right. Some 200 grand or whatever. Right. And uh, you get it to be a huge sum. And, and, uh, and then you buy you, a bunch of stocks. You hire a guy to manage your money. You hire a guy to manage the hedge fund. And he puts the, the the hedge fund into all different investments. And at the end of the year, you get a statement. Look, here's what we made. And it could be anything. It could be stocks. It could be real estate. It could be like with the. So barely... what's the vig? I mean, they get they get. Uh... I, I would assume they get a percentage. Yeah, yeah. you yeah. know, and um... sounds like a good deal. Yeah, but I'm not going to this hedge fund business. I see all these guys with the big money are the hedge fund right, guys. Right. I can do that. Like the guys who did beer league ran a five hundred million dollar hedge fund. Can't be that hard. I know a lot of imbeciles who are doing it and making a fortune. But I mean, you, look, just, you know, you, it's yeah, not well, hard to make a fortune with five hundred million dollars behind. That's, that's what, what I but mean. You know what? You're you right. Get, Howard. If you get a bunch of get a billion dollars, everything you buy becomes important. Right. But you know what, Howard? You're right because there are a lot of imbeciles doing it. That's why when you meet a guy like this, yeah, you go like, wow, Whoa. that's where I want my money, right. and because this guy ain't no imbecile, and uh, the company that he started. Uh, you know, I'll tell you off the air. If you Google it, it's like, it's pretty impressive. But yeah. so they put these people in all different investments. And like, for instance, Beer League was a $3 why million he, dollar investment why is he, for the hedge fund. Why is he, no offense, but why is he taking an interest in a peddling bullshit <laughs> enterprise like a website? Because he's fascinated by it. I see. He well, it's fun for him. It's, it's a personal thing. Oh, oh okay. So he's not it's saying... It's something new that he found out about. He said, oh, I'd like to get into that. He's not putting any of the hedge fund's money in Right. This. This but another, this is a personal thing. Yeah. So in other words, he yeah. likes show business, he likes your act, and right. he's thinking, hey, you know what, let's have some fun here and see if we can not build this website into something. Yeah, and he threw around numbers in the office. Like, I explained to him, I sort of gave him my little resume and stuff, and he told is me... Is he going to pay you? Uh, that all has to be discussed. In other words, he wants rd-lang.com. He'll take it over and he'll manage the whole website? That's the eventual goal. Tell him I'll do it, too, if you can piggyback me into this. Do you want to? Yeah, sure. Let him take over Howard Stern. Just give me a ton of fucking money. You and him in a room, it would be impressive. But see, here's the thing. This guy knows nothing about... It's funny. Like, here were the numbers he was throwing out in this meeting. He goes... You know, it would be kind of a fun thing to dabble in. Like, say I give you six million bucks and... Uh, <laughs> Hold a pit me on this. Right, so, and he goes, uh, and I'm sitting there, that's like an hour into the meeting, and uh, and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I was thinking more like 50 grand. Right, when did and, he uh, <laughs> and he goes, and say like in a couple of years, you know, we sell it for 30, 35. It's not a huge profit, but yet, you know, you, you, it's something that's fun. It's it's interesting. What is this guy fucking on acid? Uh, it's not a huge profit. Uh, well, you know, not you, for him, see, apparently. you sell Artie Dash Lane for $35 million. That's a fucking major. After hit. only putting in $6 million? That's great. Well, here's the thing. It sounds like this you guy. You sure this isn't the movie Trading Places? <laughs> and they're just goofing on you? Uh, <laughs> well, as long as Artie, I, get... I think I'll give you $6 million. As long as they're taping it all and I get a piece of the DVD. <laughs> 
I, uh, well, in that six, that would be the budget of the website. So maybe there'd be yeah. a salary a lot. But obviously, I'd retain a, a huge percentage of it. You see, the other thing is, it doesn't sound like... I'll guy... sell my whole percentage of my Howard Stern. <laughs> no, you don't want to sell the if percentage. If you could just broker it for me. It doesn't sound like this guy loses a lot. You know yeah, what I mean? Fine. Like, I'm like, ready. To, I'm ready to be taken over. Like that's why people would talk to me about the <laughs> Sirius satellite. Like, uh, and what do you think what's going to happen? And I was like, I don't know. if I bet against like Howard and Mel. Uh, you know, uh, you know. Uh, and that guy, this guy. I don't know what's like, going to happen with Sirius. But uh, you know, this guy is. You're confident in him in some level. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to start out by by maybe just starting to sell advertising on the site and getting my feet wet with it. And, and apparently, there's enough hits to where. It, it would I can, be viable. I can get yeah. I can get ad revenue. Yeah. Right. And uh, that's how we're gonna tippy toe into it. And if that does well in six months, you go uh, you, yeah, you go further in. There, huh? So he's gonna come to the gig to see the act live, and he's going to the Lions game, and he he offered me a ride on the jet. So. But the guy, if he's so you really want to meet the guy, if he's a really good businessman, he should have just said to you, "Look, Artie, what? I'm thinking of paying you five thousand dollars for your website." And you would be like, "Okay, <laughs> <laughs> that'll take care of my gambling for the week." <laughs> Let's start a different one. <laughs> you know, again, you see, but that's the thing. Like with these companies, I read a whole article in the this New York Times has opened up my entire life. Now. Right. So I read in the business section a few weeks ago that Yahoo was so behind Google, they missed out on all these acquisitions like YouTube and everything else, and they're right. they're in disarray. Like their infrastructure, they they don't know what to do, with, and and they got to catch up to Google. So they're like uh, ripe to to be taken in a way because if any website gets kind of hot yahoo is sort of like buying they're looking for everything yeah whatever they can behind and, right. and pick hey, howardstern.com gets a bunch of hits already see if you can broker that for me oh, i'm sure it must be an insane amount of yeah that again. right yeah Millions. definitely and uh so how come nobody's uh buying me out you're it's not available that, you probably don't like the hot chick you, thing come on yahoo <laughs> you don't go. go out there Yahoo wants to turn that organization around. I, I know a website that gets a lot of hits. Well, that's it. Like, what a pittance to Yahoo is a huge money to me. And I'm thinking in five years, if that happens, I'll just, my fat ass will retire. Right. You get $6 million for your website. You can say sign now. I hour. mean, that's what I'm saying. So it's just an interesting part. I mean, how much longer am I going to fucking do the road? You Boy, know? you were doing lots of business yesterday. I, my whole attitude now is my uh, my future brother-in-law, Doug Estrada, a lot of people calling in about your letterman. How'd you think it went? I, I, all I know is I didn't. I haven't seen it yet. Mm -hmm. But uh, Vinny called me. Who <laughs> works over at Letterman. Yeah. Uh, uh, emailed me. Right. And said, "Hey, Artie was really great. They gave him a really long segment, even better than his first appearance. Ooh. And Dave kept him on a real long time, and uh, everybody loved it. So he was like gushing." Again, by the time I got home, and this doesn't happen a lot, knowing these talk shows, I already have gotten another date back in May. Wow. wow. Yeah, well, I got my they love you. They already called back. It, was, it felt, and because Matt Lauer, I think, had a shorter segment than most first guess. I yeah. got, I might have had a full 11, 12 minutes. Where was Matt, I got about eight. You know. uh. Was Matt Lauer a real bore? Um, no, not as bad as I thought he would be, actually. He, uh... What was he talking well, about? He's a, he's a charming guy, and the audience seemed to dig him, and he, uh, Letterman asked him about the Tom Cruise interview. Uh, oh, okay. Which, uh, he didn't really give any, uh, fantastic revelation there, but his best line was, uh, 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 Letterman said, you know, Katie Couric's over here now. And Lauer said, when does she start? Uh, oh, that was good. Which was a good dig. That got Very a big, nice. I got a big yeah. laugh, and Letterman even said nice. You know, Very yeah, good one. Nice. So he was, uh, you know what, he's the perfect guy to follow because the audience was just in a nice, pleasant mood. They weren't laughed out. Or, I said on the wrap-up show yesterday, I, I did Kilborn once, and I had to follow George Carlin. Oh. <laughs> oh. I mean, Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> and he killed. My first line when I sat down was, I tried to use it, I said, it's always easy uh, and great to follow the best comedian ever. <laughs> but he was like a perfect guy to follow, you know. Right. Not too famous, not too strong with the laughs. They were a nice mood for me to come and right. be obnoxious. Right. <laughs> right. yeah. Did you end up wearing the uh, pants or did you, the ones you couldn't fit into I or did the, you go with the uh, stretch pants? I, I couldn't wear the ones I had on here yesterday. It would have been <laughs> embarrassing. It was, you would have seen my ass. Right. Uh, so I did the old bald spot cover up. I, that's such a weird move because there are Smoking hot chicks on Letterman. There's another this chick is a talent coordinator. I think her name is Sarah. I don't want to say the wrong name, but she's just she's a goddamn ten. Yeah. And she walks you down there into the makeup, and there's the move where there's other cute makeup chicks around. They put the makeup on me, and I go uh, to the hair guy. 
because they always have this move where they go, do you want anything? And I'm like, well, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, you see that big spot on my head? And I go, dude, honestly, when I do these talk shows, when I turn around to sit down, it's the most depressing moment of a very depressing <laughs> life I have. When I see that ball spot, he goes, I get it. We'll cover it up. So he had to do that. So but it's not a hot chick. Oh, but you were <laughs> telling this to that. a guy. Was it loud? It was a, the guy was the hair guy, but there were hot chicks around. Uh, you know. See, a guy, you should you know, know to just do it and <laughs> yeah. shut the fuck up. Right. I go, what do you think, man? Do I need anything? <laughs> yeah, yeah, with your eyebrows, you're pointing to the top of your head. <laughs> El Baldo. <laughs> uh, so, is it uh, getting bigger, the bald spot, or is it pretty much maintaining? I, I feel that I'm maintaining it, which is very good news, because from the front, I can pull it off. Yeah, you don't and look I've bald. And I've been at this plateau for a while, so maybe God will be nice and go, we're going to stop that's there. That's it, that's it. Yeah. yeah, you know, it might actually, because like my brother-in-law, Pete, mm -hmm. he um, has the same bald spot you do. Really? I've never noticed that on Pete. Yeah, but he has hair all in the front, and you know, he's yeah, an he's older guy now. he's got a lot of hair. He's got a lot of hair. It right. never, like, it never progressed to the whole full front thing. Like, hey, it, Howard? Yeah. Why doesn't he just get the Ted Danson uh, piece? Because Ted had that thing where he had a whole lot of hair. How do you get a piece? Well, but I'm a, just like a hair yarmulke. Because hmm. of where Why my... Just wear a yarmulke? <laughs> <laughs> I do you that. Know what? I'm thinking you ought to go with that whole Friars thing, you yeah. know, be a Friar, yeah. and have the little bald spot in the middle. You wouldn't get a you wouldn't get a hair piece just no, for TV. Would I you? wouldn't do that. No, yeah. but at Ross's wedding, I, you know, they give they gave out the yarmulkes, and I was like, cool, it's perfect. In case I'm sitting in front of a hot I'm ready chick. For pictures now, and I, I look respectful because I'm not Jewish, you know. I'm not, but I'm being respectful. I think at Bubba's wedding, you should wear a yarmulke. <laughs> that goes over big at a, at a thrill belly wedding. <laughs> Whenever there's a hot chick around, and we want to like hook you up with her. We're gonna put a yarmulke on. Yeah, you're just an orthodox Jew. Uh, that's all. That's good because I look like I'm good with money, you know. That would have been funny on Letterman if you walked out with a yarmulke on, uh, and, and Dave would have gone, well, what's with the yarmulke? And go, well, I'm Italian, but it, I got a bald spot, dude, and look. It would have been a good reference to his monologue. He had a real funny joke in his monologue about Mel Gibson opening up a p Christmas gift, and it was a yarmulke. Oh, all right. Perfect. But uh, I, I uh, so I got that done, and then, um, you know, yeah, it was probably a full 11, 12-minute segment. You know. you know, I was thinking about you on Letterman last night because this morning I only got up to, I was, you know, trying to watch it before I came in. And only got up to his introduction of you right. in the beginning of the show. And, you know, now that I think about it, Artie's big thing is like, you know, gee, you watch Dave talk about you, and you think he's pissed that you're coming right. on, like you're not a good enough guest. Yeah. Like he's annoyed. Like, and uh, he was introducing Artie's DVD and stuff like that. And I was trying to see if Dave was really into having Artie on. You were trying to detect a, uh, a yeah. feeling. And, and it was like some sarcasm there. And oh, right away you go. I'm so glad you said that. He did yeah. a classic Letterman thing, which now I'm in the green room watching now. I'm already paranoid from staying up the night before to hear him yeah, go, yeah, Artie he goes, Lang. Yeah. He goes, Artie Lang is here. And then he goes, he goes, um, Artie <laughs> Lang is here. It's going to be a really great show. No, I know. Really, really, really great show. Like because this is the kind of show you'll write home to your grandmother. <laughs> uh, you know, that, that Letterman uh, sarcasm. Right, right. And, uh, and like, I'm thinking Artie must be bumming right about now. I was. It just added to... Because, yeah. again, nothing's good in the back. You're watching it. Again, Vinny's the best guy ever because he's such a coach. He's but like, you watch the whole thing. You you don't sit there and try to just zone out. You watch. I'm a perennial second guest. Uh -huh. You know, I'm, I'm a second guest guys and the cone and cone and everything so i try to watch the whole first segment in case i could reference right. something to be funny again so i watch the whole thing i'm the same way before i go on i make sure everyone like steve langford came with me and insisted on talking to me while letterman was taping and <laughs> i watched the show i listened to his monologue i want to sort of feel like i'm part, part of the show of yeah, yeah you're involved by the time yeah. you get out yeah. so when steve was talking to me, i was like steve you, I love you, but you got to shut I'm the fuck up. Here. I'm like trying to get into this. I'm trying to sort of get into the rhythm. Uh, and uh, also, I benefit from you having just been there because they are very grateful that you go on there. You mm -hmm. know, uh, so they're like, you know, and tell Howard thanks, and you know, we're glad that you guys are friends of the show, and you know, they're very complimentary. Well, fuck yeah, we're friends of the show. Yeah. How did your pre-interview go? Because that can always be a little unnerving. It went fantastic. Yeah. You know. My first uh, appearance, I told him three stories, and we only got to one on the show because it went so well, the Rickles thing. And he said, sure. you got those two in your back pocket. He loves those. Anything new? And I told him about doing Philly New Year's Eve and a couple of little things. And he goes, it, it went, he goes, we got an embarrassment of riches here. It'll be fine. Oh, so you're like in. They, they, they are now confident about it. That's here. a major ass sucking. Yeah. Well, he's probably used to, again, Paris Hilton going, I don't know, I like dogs. Right. Oh, please, she doesn't even give him that much. Right. You know, so so uh, you went on and it went well. Very well. I was uh, very, very pleased with it. Let's see. Stoner dude, you're on the air. You saw Artie. Go ahead. 
Yeah, man. Dude, that was an excellent appearance on Letterman. The story about the Philly fan on New Year's Eve calling the Giants gay was yeah. classic. Dave was just sitting back laughing and totally speechless. Wow. That's yeah. great. Bong hit Bill, you're on the air. <laughs> hey, now. How's it going? Hey, now. Uh, Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year, everybody. Hey, Arden. That was a, I loved how you told the story about the uh, bank robbery. That was really good. Right. Oh, he told his bank robbery story? Told out the bank robbery story? <laughs> well, he, that was the story. When I left last time, he went, uh, good job. Uh, come back. I can't wait to hear that bank robbery story. <laughs> Which, uh, Letterman was actually thinking of being friends with Artie. Yeah. So he heard he's right, a bank yeah, robber. He started looking at that list of stories and said, like, you better stay away from this guy. I had to tell an abbreviated version of it because we did a whole, f that could take up, you know, obviously that story. That's yeah. what's great about this show. It's long form, you know. You, you, you you can't get as comfortable. Well, I bet I bet it felt good, right? I mean, did you but, feel like when you walked off that you did a good job? Really, I said, you know, Shuli was there from the news. And again, I, I, not to seem sappy, but I even said to Shuli, I said, look, and uh, my cousin Jeff, my older cousin who was here for my roast, big fan of this show, called me and said, um, he goes, dude, Stern in the morning and Letterman at night. He goes, what deal with the fucking devil did you make? <laughs> you know, because, I mean, if you would have told me 20 years ago I'd have a day like that, I'd, have, I'd faint. Uh... So it's it very, very great. You didn't break down and start drinking soda in celebration. Of no, no, I didn't, actually. <laughs> I heard well, Artie on the wrap-up show. Uh, who knows? I heard Artie on the wrap-up show was the funniest thing. His, <laughs> he, you know, he's so... He, 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 this was very funny. <laughs> Let me see if I can find it. I don't even know where I put it. Uh, Gary, preview page two. Here's Artie talking about how we're instructing him that he shouldn't drink. <laughs> you know, if he's not drinking soda, why is he drinking Hawaiian punch? <laughs> This is funny. How are those baby steps coming along? This show is filled with people who, who have figured out the world. <laughs> they have figured out life. They, they, they love giving advice. Everybody is perfect. And I, I feel like a retard. Of course I know Hawaiian punch is just as bad for you, soda. I, I gave up soda. So what the fuck? <laughs> you know, I, 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 when I give up Hawaiian punch, I'll say that. It's because everyone cares. Do you really know that, that Hawaiian punch? You didn't know Hawaiian punch was as bad as soda. You were you know shocked. What, you know what? Howard, as surprising to you as this might be, yeah, I kind of do. Yeah, Benji yeah. has this rap. Fat guys know more about food than anybody. We know. It's See, just, I disagree. We're just, we just have no willpower. We're I just, disagree. Really? When I was fat, and I when I weighed, a, you know, I was already, t Robin knows, I'm not exaggerating. I was fat. Yeah. Um, I honestly did not know about nutrition. Right. My idea of dieting was instead of ten pieces of fried chicken, I'll eat six. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> right. like I didn't know like fried chicken. The whole category wasn't healthy. Uh -huh. Like, I I just thought you eat less food. But what was happening? Which I, that's not true to a certain extent. It's not because your body starves for nutrition. The reason I'm, I'm eating two pieces of fried chicken and hungry all day because it's like it's all fried shit. You it's know, doing nothing for it. It's you. doing nothing for me. Yeah. So it's like I really didn't know, and I didn't know that that certain things. I I was just blissfully naive. Many mm. many people do but. not believe that soda can make them fat. Right. Well, yeah. I, do, I know that because I'm living proof of it. I mean, uh, <laughs> but my question to you is, if you know that Hawaiian Punch is no different than soda, why did you give up soda? I don't know. Hey, you see, I, I, feel, I, I have the <laughs> theory These are that... the logical questions that give me a headache. <laughs> <laughs> Gerald, you're on the air in Winston-Salem. How you doing there? Hey, now. Hey, now. Hey, now. Uh, Hey, I just I just saw on the, on the news where uh, Anna Nicole Smith was ordered to go to uh, to get a blood test for DNA test for for a baby because you could be like the father and yes. another guy. A lot you of people could. Be could the Ger father. Gerald, let me tell you. Um, <laughs> That's not, not I could be the father. I Whoa. am the father. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Gerald, where did you read that? Uh, no, I just saw it on the news just just now. Yes, there's a story going around that I am not the father of Anna Nicole's baby. I am. <laughs> What did you think when you first heard that I am the father of Anna Nicole's baby? You know what? I was I was trying to wait for the replay because because I'm not at home, so so I was trying to wait for the replay to to see because it said Howard K. Stern. I was like, wait a minute! I tried to hurry up and turn it up real quick, and I'm like, what is he planning on doing? He said he's not he don't want to have a baby. What is I don't, he going to do? I didn't want to have a baby. Let me take. First of all, I guess you were probably shocked that I even fuck Anna Nicole Smith. Right? Yeah. Wow. I, yeah. I, did I, you know I, that I was going on? Hey, hold on. Let me ask you this, dude. Uh, were you fucking her when when uh when she was married to the old guy? No, 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 okay. no. I was not. I would not do that. I mean, she was married at the time. <laughs> You're not um, that kind of. Guy. I'm not that kind of heel. I'm a heel. Oh, she, okay. He's no worm. I'm a different kind of worm. <laughs>
Okay, wh- um, was she fat or was she skinny when you? When I fucked her, her <laughs> she was skinny. And let me tell you what happened. And I've never told anyone this, Gerald, but because you're an astute observer of what's going on, I'm going to talk to you. All right. This broad, I meet her at a club, and she's a good-looking broad, dumb as a wall. And you know, I lay the stern charm on her. <laughs> well, I purposely—I didn't have a rubber with me. I didn't want to get her pregnant. So I fuck her in the ass, <laughs> if I can be so blunt. <laughs> when she calls me up and tells me I'm the father of a baby, I'm freaking out. I figure, I said, but I put it in your behind. <laughs> she goes, the sperm dripped down. Oh, God. Oh, the, the, no. Even though it was full yeah. of ass. That is horrible. That's oh, what made the baby so that's ass sperm. Ass sperm. <laughs> no, man, come on, man. That, 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 can't, that can't be true, man. Yeah, it's, it yeah. dripped out of her ass sperm, into the vagina. Sperm can live with yep. a certain ass germ on it. Uh, uh, but what do you I call know. the baby of that? I'll be honest with you. You know, <laughs> I, I told people that they couldn't believe it. They go, like... I've never heard of that. Uh, but they, no. t- that's, that's called an ass and pussy baby. Mm. <laughs> and I said, I've never heard that expression. They go, yeah, ass and pussy baby. I think it's a fake, Harold. You might, you might want to read that DNA yourself, man, because I, I never... Well, that's why the test. I mean, I mean, have you contacted the doctor and asked the doctor, could that actually be possible? or? As you say, I asked the doctor, and I must tell you, uh, <laughs> he gave me the answer. He said to me, he even asked the same thing you did. He said, was this when Anna Nicole was fat or thin? <laughs> and he said, because he said, if it was fat, you probably mixed up the ass and the pussy. <laughs> <laughs> this doctor was a little wild. But, but when uh, it, if, if she was thin... Yeah. She was thin, and I, I didn't mix it up. I intentionally put it there so that uh, the so, baby... But there was a smaller space to travel. That's right. Sure. It sounds like the doctor was uh, Rodney's uh, doctor, uh, Dr. Uh, Vinnie yeah. Bumbach. Right. Yes. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm in, a, I'm, in a, I'm in a lot of trouble because, you know, I have a girlfriend. Man. And, uh, now she's, uh, yeah, how's she taking this? She's not taking it well. I had to buy her jewelry. Oh, and that took care of it? Of course. Oh, yeah. He had to buy her a blood diamond. <laughs> she said, is this an ass and pussy, baby? Damn, man. Uh, I, I kind of feel for you, man. I mean, I mean I'm mean, i hoping I'm hoping that, that the doctor was wrong and this is not your baby, man, because, I mean, I really hate that, man. Cause, I'm, I mean, not, not, I'm not in love with you her, You don't Joe. want him to have a, a, a famous woman pregnant? No, man. I mean, he don't. He don't need this, man. I Me think neither. He's fake it, man. I'm serious. I think. She, I agree. That's how, that's how bras are, man. Bras are this, they 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 conniving like that, man. She probably fucked another guy that night, and then she said, "Oh, Howard, this is your bed. Come on, get the fuck out. I told her, man, get the fuck out of here. I'd hung up the phone on her. Well, I did I that. Agree with this I, guy. I told her, get the fuck out of here. And, and hung she up the went phone to the Bahamas. Her. And then she went to the Bahamas. <laughs> Sir, when when this was going on, I sort of had an inkling about it, and I agree with you. I thought it was Howard was demeaning himself by fucking her. No, I was well, the know best. Lay I ever had. Like. I had a good lay. Right. You know what you guys are well, like. Well, then fine. All right. If the girl is willing, you have to go there, right. right? We're dogs. Well, uh, this reminds me of the time I once got a girl pregnant from a BJ. She saved <laughs> wow. my jizz and spit it into her vagina. Oh, I remember that story. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And got pregnant. Man. Yeah. That what? was that acrobat you were doing. <laughs> what was that, sir? <laughs> I didn't she hear your. I didn't hear your. I didn't hear your reaction to that. No, I said, get the fuck out of here. I never, man, I don't believe that shit. No, it's true. Robin, no, no. She was from Cirque yeah. du Soleil. And, yeah. and she, the contortionist. Could, she could actually vomit into her own vagina. Oh, yeah, she used to do that all the time. She was a great leg. She kept the sperm warm. <laughs> she incubated in her mouth. Oh, my God. And, I mean, she was talking and everything. She was really good. She could pouch the sperm yeah. in her mouth. Yeah, I hate to be vile, but it's true. A lot of this stuff happens to me, Gerald. Man, I, I, can't, I can't believe that. I mean, it, it sounds. Sounds absurd, man. How I, many I, I, children do you have outside of the 14. ones you actually claim? You know? Fourteen. Every yeah. time I, I get a blowjob, I, these girls <laughs> spit it into their vagina. One actually had, Gerald, one of them actually had a mouth baby. She gave <laughs> birth through the mouth. Hey, hey, no, okay, what did they do with the placenta? Oh, well, I, that's I a good question. Yeah. Anna ate it. <laughs> really? Like yeah, she, she lo- she's so hungry, this girl. I mean, you know, you know, she's a heavy girl usually. Right. Right. Uh, Has a she, big appetite. Yeah, I'm telling you. <laughs> and she ate the placenta, she my baby. She almost ate the baby. <laughs> I was hoping. <laughs> so but now, she saved that part. now I got a kid with Anna Nicole Smith. There, man. I hope, I hope not, man. It's I don't think it's mine, though. I, no, it's not. I, because I was in the ass. But what will you think of Howard I, if it is his baby? You know, no, I, I, I mean, I wouldn't think anything different. I sound like high pitched Eric when I just did it. Not my, but uh, 
<laughs> no, I wouldn't think nothing, nothing different of how. I mean, I, I just, I just pray and hope that it's not. Well, not pray, but I hope that it's not yours, man. Seriously, because I mean, should Howard told, fight for visitation if it's his? I don't want to visit probably, that baby. He probably won't even. That's what I'm saying. He probably don't even want it, man. I mean, I mean, I'm the baby daddy, supposedly. <laughs> Right. As this gentleman says, you know, who can be sure? Right. You're the BB. But uh, I don't really want to visit. No, it's some long dick dude, black guy up in the uh, damn Bahamas that, that done got her pregnant, man, and just... Yeah, that baby looks black to me. Have you seen yeah. the baby? No, I, I have not. Seen it. I haven't seen it. I have not either myself. <laughs> I have not myself seen the baby because she's saying. down there in the Bahamas. Right. But... It could, uh, be, could be Artie's. I don't know. Mm, Artie, what, what do you yeah. think? I was nowhere near... Her. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, now I got this whole thing because I'm sure she's going to want some money for this. Right, yeah. Oh, shit, yeah. I mean, she yeah. just juiced the hell out that old guy, man. I mean, she's going to try to juice you. Well, let me tell you something. I'll know it's my baby if I see that big nose. <laughs> yeah. If that big nose starts developing, well, then I'll know. Well, I did hear there was a little trouble delivering. Because of the nose? <laughs> That's what she told me. This broad calls me up on the phone and says, I just had your baby and a fucking nose. My whole pussy's on fire. Oh. And I said, man, you get out of here. The nose isn't that big yet. She goes, wait till you see your baby. You're spitting him into your big ass nose. <laughs> big nostrils and Adam's apple. Ooh. Damn. They, so they didn't even have to cut her. The, the nose just cut it on the way out. The nose got right through, man. That hurt, man. Yeah. Well, hey, well, y'all, I'm y'all making jokes, happened? but I'm hurting inside, Gerald. Oh, I, oh, I know. I know I know the feeling, dude. I, I mean, I haven't been there, but I could just understand, like, man, what the fuck do you do now? I'll probably just, uh, I don't know, man. I'll get Fred to go down there and fucking rip her neck off or something. I don't uh, know. Hey, I'm not going to hurt. <laughs> like the, like woman was very, the woman was very generous when I had the yeah, sexual yeah, liaison. Yeah, they're going to make the ass baby <laughs> uh, uh, I just feel bad the baby's going to be known as an ass baby, <laughs> ass pussy baby, you know, which is the worst thing. Uh, Artie was an ass pussy baby, and he knows what that's like. Look at me. Look at him, man. He can't stop drinking Coca-Cola. There's something wow. insanely yeah. wrong with me. He's got a, a Coca-Cola addiction. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, Russell, Russell in Morrisville, you're on with Gerald. Yeah, um, you know, it, 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 it's, it amazes me. How much of a fool his brother is! <laughs> I, I, I just, I just defended Robin yesterday, and he just gave Sal some more ammunition. Right. I don't believe this. <laughs> well, why, why are you saying Gerald's a fool? I don't understand. Right. Gerald oh. just feels bad for me. That's all. Yeah, Gerald. Um, um, what is? How, there, there are, there is more than one Howard Stern on the planet. Gerald. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm here. I'm listening. I'm listening to this guy. I'm waiting on him to make his point. To, to yeah, say there why. is more than one Howard Stern on the planet. Howard K. Stern? This, that, you are not talking to Howard K. Stern. Oh, who who is Howard K. Stern? Then? <laughs> Howard K. Stern is the lawyer boyfriend <laughs> of Ben <laughs> Nicole Smith. Oh, okay. Damn. Shit, I didn't know, man. Yeah. I only know one. I only know. <laughs> I only know one Howard Stern, man. Hey, I what are you know. talking about, Russell? I'm the only Howard Stern, and. Uh, yeah. And who else would name their kid Howard Stern? Don't rain on our parade. <laughs> really, we're having fun here with ass pussy baby. Yeah, I, I don't don't make fun of my ass pussy baby. I, 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 had to, I had to come to the brothers' defense. All right. I, I came to Robin's defense yesterday with, with Sal and and lo and behold, I, I, Sal's probably drooling right now. Oh yeah, loving He's, this. He loves it, man. <laughs> All right, uh, Russell, thank, thank you. you. Hey, Gerald, thank you for the call. I don't but know what. Thank that... you for caring. Yeah, I mean, thank you for really concerned about you. You're a good yeah, man, yeah. Gerald. We over right. in the Winston Salem area, huh? Yes, sir. All right. Well, thank you, Gerald, and thank you for listening. All right, thank you. All right, brother. And Gerald who got a little bit confused about Howard Kaiser, like you're Howard Kaiser. Well, I'm thinking of changing my name to Howard Case. That guy gets a lot of press now that he impregnated Anna Nicole, allegedly. You're laughing about this, but clearly there are millions who think you're the father of her baby. Absolutely. I know. <laughs> I'm telling you, Beth was sitting in an airport coming back from somewhere, and uh, there was a, sort of like a hillbilly family sitting there. Thrillbilly Jones? Yeah, uh -huh. like a guy, a, you know, a guy and his wife and two kids. And the kids were like teenagers, and they were like... Man, let me see. It was a picture of Howard K. Stern. They go, let me see. The wife goes, let me see that picture. That's Howard Stern. Yeah, he ha he is the father of Anna Nicole's baby. <laughs> you would think the subscribers would go through the roof. People just wanting to hear about how I fucked Anna Nicole Smith. <laughs> oh, my God. Why aren't you being interviewed? <laughs> You tell. Look at Stern trying to lay low with his ass wow, pussy baby. Nice. <laughs> See, I bet a lot of the brothers love hearing that. Like you got, you're a baby daddy. Just yeah, I'm a baby daddy.
Hey, it can happen. You never know. Be a baby daddy. Get, you know. It happens. There are accidents all the time. That's right. Get a lot of MOCs, mother of child. Right. Uh, what was I talking about? Oh, we were talking about Artie's uh, Letterman appearance. Yes. Lou, did you see it in Newark? Lou, you want to comment on Artie? Oh, uh, yeah. Hey, Howard. Uh, long time listener. Hey, Fred. Hey, Robin. And Artie, I think he bombed. Uh, bombed? Uh, Everyone's yeah, calling in saying that. Letterman already rebooked him. Well, you just for ratings. You won't, you won't go on the show uh, you know, that many times. <laughs> well, everybody seems to be saying he was great except for you, Lou. Well, I, what did, well, what didn't you like? Uh, it's just uh, wait, when David started laughing, Artie would look over and Artie start laughing. And then if Artie was laughing, then David started laughing. Then sounds like a lot of laughing was going on, doesn't it, brother? That's it's a miserable. bomb if ever I heard one. Oh, it sounds like uh, Dave laughing was a bad thing. <laughs> Artie, I mean, I love Artie, man. He sounds great. You know, the best thing happened to the show there. Um, all right. I just thought it wasn't all that. I stayed all up right, to, to watch it. Lou is not a fan of your Letterman appearance, Artie, but that happens. I mean, what are you going to do, Bobo? What are you going to do? What's that happening to that? Hey. Artie, you had a good appearance last night. Thank you. You liked it. I want to say, you went right away for the cup. What was in the cup? Jack Daniels or what? No, they won't let that happen. I've asked. Well, you, you say it was a great appearance. But you yeah. had to take a drink as soon as you got out there, Artie? Yeah, I tried to do that. That's like my new, like... Why are you doing that, man? You know your hands are going to shake. Well, no, no, no. It didn't shake. It I didn't just, die. like, uh, wanted to clear my throat. <laughs> oh. But, Bobo... Hey, Bubba, yeah. you're in agreement that it was a great appearance. Yeah, don't you have to wait for the host to sit? Didn't you say that long time ago? Like, oh, he sat right away without looking, waiting for Dave to sit there. I don't know any such rule. No. Yeah. No, I think the host waits for you to sit. Yeah, I'm the guest. No, he's the girl. Artie's the girl and Dave's the guy. Yeah. I'm being courted. Right. I like your Uncle Sonny's story. That never gets old. <laughs> Thank you. All right, Bubba. Hey, hey, Howard, one more thing, man. I went out and bought the Stiletto 100. It's fucking phenomenal. Yeah, I, I, I've gotten a lot of great email about the stiletto. People very pleased with it. I love it. Yeah, I, I love it. Radio already, man. I can't get enough of this place. All right, man. Thanks, Bobo. Right. Take care. Bye bye. Well, the general consensus, except for one guy, and uh, by the million emails, are that you killed. It, it was, uh, you know, look, I've done a lot of these. It went very well. It's one, one of my better ones I've ever had, I think, in any show. Yeah. Well, hey, congrats. I know it's a lot of pressure. Definitely. <laughs> Quite frankly, a pain in the ass. <laughs> yeah, I think Artie's still at the stage where he finds it exhilarating, you yeah. know, and an affirmation or an acknowledgement of how far he's come. Well, Letterman, yeah, I, Letterman definitely, for someone from my generation, without questioning. The thing I don't like about doing Letterman is in, in some way you can go out there and sort of feel like you're a beginner, like you have something to prove. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's like... Who the fuck wants to do that at this point? Well, you know, after a while, it becomes, you know, Letterman's now the king. You right. know, he has the little throne there. And you have to make him laugh. You're like the court jester who comes in there to hell, to amuse him. Right. Yeah, and I also find it very creepy, like that whole, like having this whole big audience sitting there waiting for you to do something. Like, it's just fucking, it's just crazy. It's odd. It's odd. You know, well, yeah, when do you find yourself in a situation where you're having a conversation with somebody and, and a bunch of people are watching? You? Right. Yeah, the thing I like about this show is, is that like you're, we're just talking. I'm not no, but no audience. There's no audience. They have to look over and make sure they're happy. <laughs> you know, I don't want to be, uh, fuck them, but they're not happy. Dave's got to sit there and talk to them and shit. Uh, it's just crazy, you know. But uh, Artie, uh, everything I'm hearing, I mean, Vinny was gushing and Letterman <laughs> evidently booked Artie right away. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. That's really, really cool. Uh, so where was I? There's so much to go through. He gave Sirius a nice mention, too, at the yeah, beginning. So that. He put out the DVD, and he said the uh, Howard Stern show on Sirius. <laughs> Did you see it, Robin? Because maybe, maybe no, you want to play know, it? I have to yeah. be up uh, at this time of the morning. Yes, please play it. Artie on Letterman Clips on J.D. Page in Orange. <laughs> Don't ask. All right. Here. Oh, I see. These are clips. All right. That's good. Welcome back to the show, Artie. Nice hey. to see you. How was your New Year's Eve? You, you probably work a lot as a comedian, right? I do. As a comic, I got to work on New Year's. I, is that good or not good? It's good. Well, now, because I'm a little bit known, I got a lot of good cash. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> it used to be bad. They used to just pay me, you know, in like uh, chicken salad sandwiches. But I get... <laughs> Uh, now I get real money, and this past New Year's, I was in Philadelphia at the mm -hmm. Tower Theater uh, in front of 3,000 crazy Eagles fans. Oh, wow. Uh, you got Philly fans there? Yeah. 
They are they are maniacs. I mean, I'm a New York Giant fan, and we're playing each other next week in the playoffs. And they know that from the radio that I'm a Giant fan. Mm -hmm. So I come out, I try to be all happy, and I go, Happy New Year, Philly, and it gets nothing. Mm -hmm. No laughs. <laughs> Nobody does anything. And then finally, a guy in the audience helps me out. He yells out, You and the Giants are both gay. <laughs> <laughs> and that got a roar. <laughs> uh, and then they went into this eagle chant. They just spelled the word eagles. Yeah. <laughs> e you can't stop them. You gotta wait. Spell eagles. I'll wait. Uh, I gotta wait to make a living for God's sake. I mean, you know, well, it's it's not bad when they give you a great line like that mm -hmm. because uh, when I was bombing, I would just go. By the way, me and the Giants are still gay. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. You're both gay. <laughs> uh, if there was a real lull, I would say, on my way uh, down here, guys, I saw Eli Manning, the quarterback for the Giants, making out with a dude. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, that's oh, good that stuff. that was hysterical, Artie. Look at you up there, man. <laughs> You're killing Letterman. Right. America falling in love with Artie Lang. Yeah. Yes. Oh, they've had plenty of opportunities. Yeah. <laughs> You've given them every opportunity to fall Once every... again, another go-round. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. I, why don't you use that routine on this show? That's funny. You never told I, us that. Yeah. I, 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 well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Too busy with He's his Coca-Cola addiction. Back. Hey, now, that's funny. That's good stuff. Let me, let me do one more. Yeah. All right. If a crowd just isn't getting it, it's just torture up there. And there's this club, Zanies, in Vernon Hills, Illinois. If I ever decide to kill myself, I'm going to drive to Zanies in Vernon Hills, Illinois. <laughs> because I want to commit to killing myself, and there's nothing at Zanies that will change my mind. <laughs> Let him crack it yeah, up. Yeah, he loves that. He knows that, man. He's he likes that. dark stuff. Yeah. Well, he's also been in those clubs. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's nothing at Zany's that'll make me change my mind. Uh, that's, that's a great thing. line. Great <laughs> line. Nada. Look at you. I think this is good stuff, man. I think this is A-list type yes, material. this is A. You're not B anymore. You're A. Can I be honest? You used to be B. Now you're A. Uh, <laughs> I never wanted to tell you you were B. <laughs> You were B bordering on a C, now you're A. <laughs> Look at the crowd going nuts. Yeah. Listen to him. Oh, look at Artie's face just changes. Oh, like, very it. serious. He's now, you know what this is? Artie's like Eddie Murphy on Inside the Actor's Studio right now. I was going to say, that's an Oscar face. Yeah. Yes. Oh, my God, all serious. Wow. Look, very serious. This wow. was nothing for me. Yeah. I need a cause. Uh, yes, you know, I, I'm trying to be hung, humble, but I'm not. Right. Look at me. <laughs> The applause breaks are weird, though, like you've said. It's like, it's just, you know, you, you, sometimes, I mean, honestly, you know, you do stand up long enough, you're used to laughs. But at a comedy club, they don't clap like that. Right, <laughs> they, right. The like, audience yeah. at Letterman is very enthusiastic. And, you know, and, 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 the, and it's nice. But the, but the thing is, like, you know, uh, when I would do Letterman and I would do a, a killer appearance or something I thought was killer, you wait for something to happen in your career big right. from it. And nothing fucking happens. It's the, you know what I mean? Like you sit there and go, well, wait, wait, what the hell's going to happen? But Those days are over. Yeah, I think. right. All right. But anyway, um, this is very funny. Let's Thank continue. You, yeah. Let's continue. Uh, and uh, we do a 5.30 p.m. matinee on a Saturday. I'm sorry, 5.30? 5.30 p.m. And I get up at like 5.20, you know. <laughs> on the road. I get up at 5.20. I have a Twix bar and a soda, and I get over there. Um... <laughs> I try to fit in a spin class, but in Illinois, they don't have a lot of those. And, <laughs> and uh, I get to 5.30 p.m. It's a no-smoking show. It's one of, like, five shows we have to do. And you just feel like a slave. The guy, the owner, just like, yeah, you got a 5.30 show. And um, it's all old people. So there's this 75-year-old couple in the front row. Nice. Yeah, it's wonderful when you see that, you know. <laughs> They're going to get a lot of my Springsteen material. Uh, so, <laughs> you know the third song, I'm Born to Run, sir? You know? And uh, he's got this huge beer gut like I do now in suspenders, and his wife's next to him. Nobody laughs at any jokes, but this guy feels he has to make some sort of noise so instead of laughing after every joke all you hear is this guy go like this I met something <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, no, it's comedy. You're like, the laughs are part of the act. It's like the timing. You yeah. expect the laugh. You know, like, da da ba ba da bum. Oh, and that's something. <laughs> <laughs> and then when you try to, when I would do some little off color, which I do a lot in my act, uh, you know, if I say like "damn" or something, he would cover his wife's ears and go, "Whoa, <laughs> not the missus, not the missus." <laughs> Just looking around for the, looking around for anybody who has a gun to shoot myself in the head. <laughs> wow. I should, God, I should have went to college. Yeah. But. Guys will do that. Like they have that great way of talking. My my uncle Sonny, one of the greatest men ever lived. Uncle Sonny. Uncle Sonny. Yeah, Sonny. like yeah. the Corleone. Uh, I'm from Jersey. One of my favorite guys ever. The last few years of his life, he was sick, and he said, "Screw it, I'm just going to stay in bed and watch TV all day." Mm -hmm. And he got into a lot of modern TV shows. One of his favorite shows was Buffy the Vampire Slayer. <laughs> True story. He loved Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and he reminded me of this old guy the way he talked. One time, I said, "Uncle Son, what's this show, Buffy the Vampire?" Slayer? Slayer about. <laughs> Dead serious. This is a true story. He goes, it's a Jew broad, fights Draculas. I guess he watched the end of the show, saw Geller, maybe she's Jewish or something. He did like research and she fights vampires. It's a Jew broad, fights Draculas. And then he would just eat a hunk of mozzarella like an apple, you know. <laughs> He'd give me Yankee tickets. He had a hunk of wood like an apple. He'd eat the, he'd eat the apple, then he'd give me a Yankee ticket. He'd say, give me a kiss. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say, hey, hey, give me, give me a kiss. I'd kiss him on the cheek. kiss him. i get the hell out of here. Yeah. Wow, that's good stuff. Oh, right. my. Look at you. Look at you. <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> well, you got a serious. You know, you really remind me of Eddie Murphy in the Inside the Actors Studio. He's changing. Eddie, this is every the time, day. every time they show a clip of Eddie wow. doing something uh -huh. great, Eddie uh -huh. would just have this very serious look on his face. That's right, trying to be humble. This is my not. word. You trying to be humble over there? Well, I don't know. Look, I don't know. Look at me. I'm looking That's at That's good. Your usual Artie face. You got another face going. This is a very serious face. But, yeah, Eddie Murphy did. They got like Madonna's got that English accent. Eddie Murphy got his own accent. Yeah, we too. don't even yeah. know where he's from anymore. I, Eddie I Murphy goes. You know. Yeah. It's kind of uh, gay. I'm listening yeah. to it. Definitely a little feminine. Yeah. yeah. You know. Uh, yeah. You know. Uh, yeah. That's, you know. But he's good too. But look at you on Letterman, Kellen, and Dave cracking up in a genuine way. Dave doesn't have to do a thing. He loves you. Want one more clip? <laughs> yeah. We, we well, they get it, I think they got into the bang thing now. All right. Oh, good. I want to hear this. Yeah. I'm enjoying it. It was the longest segment I've ever had on a talk show. Easily. You're killing. Yeah. When you're killing, they keep you out there. You see, these other guys didn't know what they had. Dave understands. Thank you. You know, like Madonna and Eddie Murphy, you're going to have to come up with an accent now. I was thinking Which for you. Would be the uh, the RDS? redneck Indian accent. Indian. <laughs> like he goes to India. Like, yes, yes. He yes. He's Indian. When I did um, the David like... Letterman show the second time, I went. I understand, Artie. What What is your favorite word? <laughs> Curry. <laughs> You should do the Indian accent. What's your then. favorite curse word? Pussy fucker. You know who my favorite person was? My uncle Sonny. Yeah. Yes, he ate a mozzarella. That motherfucker. <laughs> now, when you're here from Jersey, you're speaking like an Indian person. Yeah, well, uh, some people say since I got very successful at Letterman, I speak different. I love that it's, it's on a bad Indian accent. I'm like, no, I don't know what it is. Well, Madonna does a bad English accent. Right. Yes. And Eddie does a bad whatever he's doing. Madonna right. doesn't commit to whatever she's trying. Like, just do it. Right. I know, half the words are still, you know, Detroit. Yeah, yeah. yeah but Donna should come out and go, Hello, governor. <laughs> right, fuck it. She so should, nuts. Yeah, she should be, what are those guys called? The the uh, guys who twist up every word? The Cockney. Cockney dialect, <laughs> yeah. All right, here's a final clip from Artie on Letterman. Artie, yes. sit back right. and put on that face. <laughs> Uh, last time you were here, there was a, a story that we didn't get to, and uh, I, I didn't even know if you want to talk about it, right. but it's when you were a kid, yeah. uh, you you were uh, arrested, <laughs> and, and, it, and you think, oh, arrested for well, what? I don't know, speeding? Or, dice, yeah, uh, something uh, like that. Uh, but, but no, it was a little more than that. It was, uh, the first charge was attempted bank robbery. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, the key word is attempted. Um... <laughs> 
<laughs> How old were you? So I was 17. 17. Summer of 85. Uh, I, uh, like that means anything, who cares? Um, and uh, I paint a picture, Dave, when I tell it. I'm like Mark Twain. Um, <laughs> Summer 85 on the old Hudson River. And uh, I was with my girlfriend at the time. I was dating this broad, hot Italian chick from Jersey. And, uh, and uh, I, we were in the bank, and I noticed the bank teller was kind of cute. I, I didn't have a relationship with the bank until I was 27. But I was 17. She was doing some banking, and I noticed that the girl behind the counter was cute. Now, I'm a dummy. I realize this is retarded. But uh, a big fan of Woody Allen in that movie, Take the Money and Run, he, he hands a hold-up note to oh, that's the right. woman. Yeah. I thought that would be like something she'd find funny and yeah. flirtatious. <laughs> so while my girlfriend is banking, on the back of a deposit slip, I write, uh, I have a gun. Oh, God. I remember this word for word because a judge read it back to me a million times. <laughs> <laughs> I have a gun, put $50,000 into a bag, turn around and count to 1000 act casual. <laughs> Thank you for your cooperation, Artie Lang. I signed it. <laughs> I thought that when she saw my name, it's a joke, right? But of course, not realizing the first thing she sees is I have a gun. Yeah. Probably didn't get all the right. way through she the note. Steps on the silent alarm. Unbe I see her turn wet. Oh, I'm sorry, honey. It's just a joke. And, oh. uh, I, I didn't have sex with her, by the way. I didn't work it. Um, I, I take the note, throw it out in the garbage can behind me, which was a mistake. And I go, I'm so sorry. This was a joke. We leave in my girlfriend's car because I didn't have a car. We leave in her father's 72 Ford Granada, which wasn't the, the best getaway car. <laughs> And uh, an hour later, they have her name. I'm playing wiffle ball with my buddies in my backyard. <laughs> I had a wicked at, smile. At the hideout. Yeah. Huh? Back at the hideout, they're, they're playing wiffle ball. At the house, they're held up playing wiffle ball. I had a hell of a slider. And uh, she, I get a call from her loud Italian sister, Teresa. Oh, I will never forget these words embrazened in my head. It's, it's Sue's sister. Cops, a SWAT team went to her house. House. Armed robbery it went through. And her sister goes, Artie, what did you do? I'm like, what are you talking about? She goes, the cops are here. They want to talk to Sue. Talk to Sue. It's got to be drugs. <laughs> drugs? What are you talking about, drugs? And uh, sure enough, I had to go. We had to uh, 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 turn ourselves in. They cuffed us. And um, uh, my uh, my girlfriend's father was like a, a greenhorn right off the boat, an Italian guy. He might have been connected. I was so scared of him. <laughs> I said to the cops, whatever you do, throw, put me in jail for 50 years. Do not do a thing to her. <laughs> and uh, sure enough, the father got me aside and goes, when you rob a bank, you will not take my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent advice. Words to go by. There it is, Artie Lang's Beer League, now available on DVD. Well, yeah. Happy New Year, Artie. Dave, thanks. Always man. a pleasure. Uh, Thank you very play. much. Right. Artie Lang, folks. We'll be right back with all this time. Who is next? Martha Steiner? Uh, some band. God, there's two million bands now, man. Augustana was the name of the band. I Augustana? Mean. August, like the month, A-N-A. -A, Augustana. Oh. Uh, is it a chick? I, no, I think it's a group, some sort of oh. group. I didn't stay to watch it, but I guess that's <laughs> Lauer, me, and them was why he was going, uh, you know. Big a show. Yeah, right but you about. saved it. Yeah. It was good. Man, great. Yeah, excellent. I put it right up there, like, you know. It was a great uh, talk show appearance. Thank you. Hey, good for you, man. I know, I know the pressure of that. And... You see, sometimes, sometimes though, fans like like I know we have a policy a lot. The fans are always right, but sometimes you just want to go, dude. Like, how about a little slack? Like that guy who called and said I bomb. Like, oh, is, is that going to be with you all day? No, I'm just saying. But like, what does he want? Like, sometimes you can get it if it's a gray area. But I mean, that was that was kind of all right. I, I, if I, if I, you went on there, kind of all right. If they, if they made you the president of the United States yeah. at that appearance, there's going to be somebody who says you suck. I mean, Jesus. Yeah, no, you can't do better than that. Not a little Dorian, slack. No, that, that, that there should be no negatives on I, that. I wonder what that guy does. But. Yeah, let's go evaluate him. Uh, Dorian, you're on the air in Washington. Hey, dude, I thought you were fantastic, Artie, man. The, the dialogue, man, and how you deliver a joke and, and deliver stories is just absolutely amazing. Right. It's awesome. Absolutely. But hey, man, did, did like did like you just wake up or something before you... <laughs> 
Well, you know, again, that's a, and Howard is an expert at this too. Doing that that schedule where this show in the morning and then you tape at five thirty. There's no way to like. You're not fresh. Yeah, and I, a nap if it's a little too long, it sucks. And I went home. I did the pre-interview, which is stressful. I try to lay down, and and yeah, I I, I probably didn't look the freshest, you know. You didn't sleep beforehand. No, but yeah, I I, no. I tried to. I laid down. I closed my eyes, and then you know. You were too charged up. Before, Stop it, Artie. Right. Tell the guy you planned that look. That Oh, that's well, Artie's frumpy look. That makes him funnier. Very calculated. Because <laughs> yeah. it, it looked like like you'd just woken up or something, and, and the way that they did the makeup, but I swear to God, dude, you look just like Pink's mom and Pink Floyd the Wall. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. That's the nicest compliment I've ever got. What a compliment. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Let's go to Dan. Dan and Mother, do you think they'll drop the bus? Yes, Dan. Hey, now. Hey, now. Go now, brother. Hey, brother. Hey, Artie, uh, you look like shit last night. Dude. Mm. I can't believe how fat you've gotten. I did, man. That's <laughs> the other thing. The other thing I can't get away from is... The other thing is, Artie could wear certain clothing that would make him look less portly, but... A I... turtleneck didn't help anything. He had, he had him a turtleneck? Uh, Big I red turtleneck. I'm, I mean, again, it is weird. Like, I'm sitting here, I'm going on national television, I got I sleepers in my eyes, I'm, I'm dressing myself, and I'm just looking for a clean shirt, I found a turtleneck with... I don't know. I did. I, you're right, dude. It, it was not... Why don't you go to, like, a chick you trust, like your sister and have her dress yet. She, you know what? My sister has done that for me in the past, but she's in Vietnam. Right Vietnam. Now. She won't come back from Vietnam. I, she's so she's in hiding. She's not to dress a hearty. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Get Ralphie uh, Cakes to do it for you. You know, you're yeah, right. Yeah, Ralphie, anyone, like Ralphie always says. Ralph has offered to do that, yeah. which was very nice of him, but. Why don't you take him up on that? Because Ralph always said, resisted. He could put you in like a big black shirt or something and drape you, you know? Yeah. Like, I mean, uh, it, like, like what Liza Minnelli does when she goes on camera. Move, move, move. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, whatever it is, dude, It's I, I'm lucky enough to wear it. It really doesn't matter what I look like. You know what I mean? It was, it was a great appearance, though, Artie. It'd be yeah. funny if Artie's sister came back and dressed him up as a Vietnamese, like, rice patty. <laughs> right, you have one of those little funny jackets hat. on and the funny hat. <laughs> <The> geisha. <laughs> yeah, that'd be cool. Like, You'd Artie. you pulling a rickshaw when I, he comes I, out. Artie, you just came back from Vietnam. I've, I've, I've got a Vietnamese influence now for your Letterman appearance. Oh, when, thank you. It'd when, be funny. There was that period of time. I was on the Norm show that period of time where the Hollywood Squares were really scraping the bottom. And I did a week on the Hollywood Squares. <laughs> this had to be back in, like, 99 when Whoopi was center square. Uh -huh. uh, I was next to Carmen Electra the whole five, which is the well, best thing ever. That's not bad. Yeah. My well, sister did she wear, like, hot little outfits? Oh, and stuff? Yeah. Dude, forget it. I was yeah. in a square next to her. want to kill yourself. Her, first of all, two of the night. You know, they do all five in one day. Right. So two of the days... Uh, I was next to her and Vivica Fox. They're in the square oh. next to me. The, oh God, the 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 awful dulty conversations they would have. <laughs> oh, uh, I'll never like, forget. Like vapid. I'll never forget the conversation. Carmen yeah. Electra had just done the first scary movie. It hadn't come out yet. Right. And she's barely in it. Right. So she right. goes, Vivica Fox and her talking. And Vivica does, she really turns on the black. Because I did a film with her, too. I said I was on a plane with her right, uh, yeah. to Germany. She does the black thing, like, really over the top. So she says to Carmen, how you doing, girl? What's up? And Carmen goes, oh, I just shot a movie with Keenan. I know you know him. Uh, he put me in a film. And uh, Vivica Fox goes, he tried to come on to you, girl. <laughs> and he goes, well, no, she, he was real nice. Uh, it was really cold up in Canada. And it was cold in my trailer, and he got me a heater, and I thought that was nice. Wow. <laughs> I'll never forget that's what you said. Wow. He got me a heater. You know what that makes me think of? I get, yeah. I, you, you done with that story? No, I'm just saying. Yeah. My sister happened to be in L.A. that whole week, so she bought five shirts for me to wear. You don't change your pants. Right. You know? And they were beautiful shirts. She's got great taste, but I just didn't look comfortable in any of them. I just look, you know I'm what? better as a slob. Exactly. You, know? right. you got to go on with what you're comfortable in. Right. You do. You got to feel like that's that's me and that's who I am. And Plus, I'm sitting next to Carmen Electra, and I don't, you know, what the fuck? I just want to look at her. Who cares? Yeah, you know, I, he just got me thinking about something, Marty. I, it